have uh, Ryan here. Ryan? No? So this is going to be our last presentation for uh, today. Oh, I didn't know the internet doesn't work in here. What doesn't work? <laughs> oh, right. Um, oh, it's on. <laughs> That's actually that lady, Eva DuVernay, who also directed Selma. Hi everyone, my name is Vikas Matsova. Uh, as the professor said, this is Eva DuVernay. Uh, so thank my uh, uh, classmate who did a uh, court on a movie she actually did earlier uh, called Selma. Um, so thank you for that background information. Um, as you can see here, um, this is uh, uh, people just speaking about the event. So you can see that a lot of people <coughs> find the movie um, very um, uh, controversial, yet something they want to talk about. Um, as, as this quote says from DuVernay, every line, every frame of this film leads you to a place, to that place, leads you to the now, and leads you to the movement. Um, The 13th Amendment is what the movie is um, based off of. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with it, it says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment or crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any subject to their jurisdiction. Um, so it seemed like they actually um, outlawed slavery with the amendments and whatnot. Um, but there was actually a loophole that the southern states um, started to utilize, um, which basically says once you are convicted of a crime, um, you are now a uh, slave um, to society. Um, you can see in this chart here how state and federal prison inmates uh, have risen uh, drastically, um, which will help you to understand um, why somebody would take their time out um, when they could be doing Hollywood movies uh, as she was um, vetted by Marvel uh, Studios to do uh, Black Panther um, but she actually um, decided not to go with it because they were um, that M Marvel engine was too much for her. Um, some details on the movie. Uh, it was uh, it's based in the US. Um, they speak pretty much English and throughout the whole movie. Um, it was released October 2016, uh, so fairly uh, recent, um, also known as the 13th. Uh, the different filming locations is West Oakland Amtrak Station in Oakland, California, which is also where um, DuVernay was uh, brought up. Um, so <clears throat> the 13th Amendment um, came after uh, that people in the United States and African Americans um, were freed, um, quote unquote. Um, my family's not from here, so I, I'm just, I've learned about it growing up here myself. Um, as you can see here um, in this photo, um, it's not necessarily a, a race thing. Um, in these different jails, it affects all different people. Um, but some other statistics that started coming up um, were the myth that there were, you know, more black males in jail than in college, um, which is very much not true. Can't 
see the whole graph, but in the blue it says uh, one million four hundred four. Wait, wait, one million four hundred thirty-seven. One million four thirty-seven three sixty-three. Sorry, I just woke up. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> this stat is from two thousand thirteen. Um, so hopefully over the last couple years, um, they didn't all get shot by cops. Um, as we saw with all the hashtags. Um, the young man um, and more people like me did go through college. Um, 13th of Matt examines the dramatic rise of incarceration numbers in the United States uh, from some 513 um, people in 1970 to 2.3 million uh, today, uh, pairing them with, with the widely circulated assertion that um, one in three black men were prison in their lifetime. And you can see his brother here asking my next. Um, no, he's not, because of people like Ava, creating movies. Um, as you can see, another stat here, this is another chart. Um, just in comparison um, with other countries, um, this chart, this part of the chart here, um, is actually all these countries put together um, in comparison to what the United States. But my man snoring. Can you stop snoring, please? Incarceration problem. Uh, UN, uh, U.S. has the largest prison population in the world, both in terms of the actual number of inmates and as a percentage of the total population. Uh, so the, the, to, the, throughout the film, they continue to speak about this and the Thirteenth Amendment um, sub theme, uh, saying uh, approximately eighteen million five hundred eight thousand nine hundred twenty-six people unite in the U.S. population are black males of all ages. And you can see these stats, more and more statistics that are being pulled out. Um, with such a small percentage of the population, it's kind of <coughs> co coincidental, you could say, on um, why this would be like this. Um, but soon we'll start to find out that these courts are, you know, um, on the stock market. And these papers that they're creating in jail with all these black people um, are considered derivatives, um, which we, we know um, with companies like CCA, which is trade on stock market, um, adds to their bottom line. So when you can pull people into your, your system that, you know, can't defend themselves, like such as a white person that has a mom, dad, family that was systematically put down. Um, and this is what Ava gets into. So when you go on Netflix and you watch this, you'll see um, a lot of what she's talking about. Um, and the subplot, um, so the plot is depicted around the 13th Amendment, um, which, quote, like, it says it formally abolished slavery in the United States um, back in 1865, um, but it actually didn't really do that per se. It was a new form of slavery that it created. So rather than uh, these um, old slave masters, you know, getting rid of their system completely, people sat down at a table or a room like this, had somebody like me speaking, probably with ideas on how we can actually figure out how we can actually do this. Well, not me, obviously, <laughs> but certain people in history. Um, so Ava, you know, a Hollywood director or whatnot, she actually was in the film too, um, took a chance to actually speak about this and create a movie. And instead of putting it out in Hollywood theaters, um, she put it out on Netflix where a lot more people could see it. Um, so there's names for this. It's called the Prison Industrial Com uh, Complex. Um, public education is said to uh, kind of create this, especially in uh, places in the U.S. where uh, people don't have uh, you know, the schools. So some of the characters are actual real people. Um, as you can see, they're mostly scholars, activists, and politicians. Uh, Donald Trump and uh, Hillary Clinton are actually in it as well speaking on how they, you know, how in the past they were pushing black males as savages and animals, which they weren't the only ones to push this, but it's been pushed through the media. So nowadays, um, black males is going out. If they're not part of, like, some fraternity or whatever, um, they're 
continually looked at as this, and you can see at the bottom, um, Philando Castile, Tamir Rice, who was just a 12-year-old boy playing with a small fake gun, um, and someone called the cops on him, um, and 0.3 seconds later, as soon as the cops came, um, a little 12-year-old boy was uh, shot and killed. And this happened so much, it happened to a U.S. Uh, C uh, college uh, graduate um, the other day, um, so people like me start to get numb to it. Um, so anyway, some of the narrative style and the structure um, is basically a bunch of interviews with video clips and the backgrounds backing it up. Um, so sometimes you can see these people actually uh, speaking um, as the movie's going on. So um, a lot of the only original footage are the interview pieces um, that June Duvernay juxtaposes this with affecting real imagery and sound design. Um, as you can see here, this is an actual real judge um, that was sentenced to 28 years um, because they realized, you know, he was actually getting incentives for every child. I think it's in the Philadelphia area. So there's people that are amongst us that actually, you know, kind of push this. Rather than telling the truth and doing that, they get incentives for keeping the truth away from us um, and then it keeps us apart, not understanding that we're all kind of one. Um, so this guy who's probably getting his kids through some of the top schools, driving nice Benzes, at the same time making over 100000 base. Um, but little do we know, all these judges get super amount of kickbacks because they actually own the court that they sit in, which people don't realize, but it's a private corporation. So the genre of the film is documentary film. Um, pe people, oh, wait, so, um, I'm, my apologies, that's so this line, I'm not sure why that's there. But anyway, um, some of the corrupt judges, you can see more of them getting some kickbacks, uh, millions of dollars. Um, the ideology of the film is focused mostly, mostly on race in the colorable United States criminal justice system. Um, the film is titled after the 13th Amendment's United States Constitution, which outlawed slavery. Um, some other uh, ideas of uh, mass uh, incarceration, the pers prison industrial complex, uh, slavery in the United States, and Southern sla uh, strategy. Um, I realize when people have, you know, because I've been good, my father's disciplined me so well, and I had a great family, but, um, you know, there's people that once they get uh, some sort of sentence or whatever, a felony, they won't even get, you know, they're hardly, it makes it very hard to go to school and very hard to get a good job. So how are you going to pay for school? It's already tough for us or you guys who make 20000 a year or just about that. Um, so how can somebody else, you know, without selling drugs or something, figure that out? Um, so you can see some of the things that create this system of prison industrial complex, like when you lose community service, arts, cultures, parks. When we don't have our seniors um, speaking to us, being leaders, you know, now they have to go back to work. You see a bunch of seniors in shop, right? I'm like, yo, don't you get Social Security? Like, what's, what's wrong with this? You know, I don't want to be old. Now I have to figure out now how I'm going to make enough money so when I get old, because Social Security is obviously not going to be enough. And if I'm the only one thinking that, then, you know, Whatever. Anyway, formal <laughs> aesthetic elements. Um, each interview is shot in a location that evokes an industrial setting. Uh, visually supports the theme of a prison as a factory churning out the free labor that the 13th, 13th Amendment supposedly dismantled when it abolished slavery. Um, visually supports the theme of a prison. Oh, did I repeat that? that um, that's weird how sometimes technology does stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> you can see some of the different instances of the prison industrial complex again. Um, because these people, when they're in jail, they're actually creating products we use, like, you know, our phones sometimes, or screens, but they make 19 cents an hour, an hour, and then places like Walmart can sell things that we think is super cheap, and we wonder why, you know? It's because they made it pretty cheap. You know, they got the parts from somewhere where they uh, colonialized somewhere in Africa to get the parts to ship it to China to be made even cheaper. Um, and, you know, we just keep it going by when we have our cool little Apple iPhones and we walk around with our symbol thinking we're better. And then, you know, Google comes out with Android and it's 
basically the same thing, just in a different form. Um, some background info. The film was actually filmed in secrecy, so there wasn't too much about it, like, you know, until it came out um, in the New York Film Festival. So what a way to, to come out. Uh, <laughs> so dude here, born and raised in Compton, California, like I said earlier. In addition to interviewing leading legal scholars and activists like Angela Davis, Luverness says she reviewed about 1,000 hours of archival footage, including images of lynching, cell phones, videos on police abuse, uh, the birth of a nation, the 1915 DW film that glorified the Ku Klux Klan, was screened at the White House for President Woodrow Wilson. So, I'm uh, like a president. People talking about Donald Trump. This month, this guy had a, <laughs> a, a screening for the Ku Klux Klan propaganda film like this. Hey, I'm president. I'm watching Ku Klux Klan film. Like, so you worried about Trump when there was, I, mean, I hope Obama's not racist or prejudiced, but every other one was. So anyway, this film goes into that. Um, uh, so <clears throat> this is just more info on the prison industrial complex because it's so well ran. Like, I didn't even realize how good I was doing until I started doing more research on how many of my other brothers who aren't supported by, uh, you know, money or whatever, um, how hard it is. So I did more research to figure out why would some, some, it be so, like a whole system so go so hard to like fight and what are they, what's the secret, like what are they hiding? So I, I did more research and then some articles in Time came up um, that speaks on uh, Neanderthal uh, 